Welcome back. Prospects, according to MLB.com, the top 10 in baseball. The Mets have Francisco Alvarez at number one, Gunnar Henderson at number two. And check out Grayson Rodriguez. So the Baltimore Orioles, Adley Rushman, plus these two guys who are coming, Henderson and Rodriguez, Anthony Volpe, you heard a lot about him at the trade deadline. Will they trade him? Will they not trade him? And uh, Moreno on uh, Toronto, I think I uh, got a touch in the in the bigs, right? Yeah, he was up for a bit. Um, so we're going to dig into this right now with Sam Dykstra. And uh, Sam is joining us right now. Sam, thank you for uh, joining us uh, via Zoom. And we're ta- let's talk about Alvarez for a second here. How excited are should Mets fans be for this young man to get to the big leagues because we know that in New York, things have a way of being elevated prior uh, to, let's just say, uh, prior to their time, if you will. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, that comes with the atmosphere of being in the big city. But listen, we had Francisco Alvarez as our number one overall prospect at this midseason update, and we did that for a reason. He's 20 years old, already at AAA. He's showing plus plus power to get there. That's his carrying tool. He's going to hit home runs. He's going to hit far home runs. Buck Showalter talked in the spring before Alvarez had really even seen double A, just how you know major league quality those home runs looked. Now he might just be average defensively. We think that's going to be okay. He again, average is not necessarily bad, um, but he, he's going to be pushing for the majors with that bat. If that holds, and if it's as good as we believe it it can be, we're looking at multiple all-star trips for Francisco Alvarez. We've already seen one big name come up, join the Mets this week in Brett Beatty. You think Alvarez has even a bigger ceiling than Beatty does? Uh, Give me a comp on Alvarez, if you have one. Well, so, listen, this is going to be the easy one, and I get it. He is a Met, and again, I don't want to feed into the narrative that things are going to explode just because he's in New York. But, again, that first catcher, okay glove, capable of hitting 35 to 40 homers, he's capable of being 75% to 80% of Mike Piazza. And if that's true, that's a really, really good catcher. That's a very, very valuable catcher. And at his age, he's going to hold down that position for years to come. Wow. All right. That's not a bad comp for a Hall of Famer and also a uh, different size, different shape. Right. But OK, right. We'll, we'll take that. How about the Orioles? Uh, they have six prospects in the top 100. So, I mean, are we looking at a team that is – uh, close to being a powerhouse, or give me a timeline and how impressed you are with their farm. Yeah, I mean, I hope the timeline was going to be this season, right? I thought they were going to be contenders this year. You get up Adley Rutschman, you get up uh, hopefully Grayson Rodriguez. It didn't work out that way because of a lat injury, but it sounds like he's at least close to returning this year. We could see him back on a mound before the season is up. This is a loaded farm system. How ma- much or how many times do you talk about? a team drafting the number one overall pick and him being the number three prospect in that system, which you can see on your screens now. Jackson Holiday is number three behind a Gunnar Henderson, behind Grayson Rodriguez. This is a loaded system. It's a deep system. They have really good top talent up there up top. Just to talk about Gunnar Henderson for a second, an infielder, shortstop slash third baseman. He might end up at third eventually. Really good power, really good speed. He's got the capabilities to be a 2020 guy year in and year out. And one note on him, he just started at first base this week. Now, the Orioles traded away Trey Mancini. Uh, They're obviously going for a wild card spot. There's an off chance that Grayson Rodriguez could join the O's down the stretch. And getting somebody with his ceiling would be a huge boost to their playoff chances. Hey, give me uh, give me something on holiday. I know he hit a home run number one for him. Is he built like his dad? I know he's a lefty, a left handed hitter, not a righty. But his dad was like a NFL player. tight end Uh, how big is this kid yeah i mean this guy's going to be more hit over power uh his dad was a little bit more powerful than i think he is but he's also quicker he's going to stick at shortstop which is notable matt holiday was not a shortstop um so don't be drawing you know perfect one-to-one relations here uh between the holidays but uh you know jackson holiday homering today he's got hits in each of his first five games in the florida complex league he's as off to as hot a start as the o's could have hoped uh d-backs um, why are they interesting to you right now? Yeah, so I just mentioned, you know, don't draw a perfect line between Jackson Holiday and Matt Holiday. You can actually draw a pretty close line between Drew Jones, the Arizona Diamondbacks, first round pick this year at number two overall, and his father, Andrew Jones. 
Drew Jones, they added him to the system, a clear plus plus fielder in center field. Uh, what's going to be fascinating for the D-backs is how they're going to make that outfield work in a few years. We've seen Alec Thomas come up this year and be a, a special uh, defender in center. Corbin Carroll, their top prospect, is a really fast outfielder as well with a good arm. He's coming off shoulder surgery last year, has tore the cover off the ball this year at double A and triple A. He might just end up having average power in the end, but it's still really, really special five-tool quality out of Corbin Carroll. And oh, by the way, their first-round pick last year, Jordan Lawler, is off to a great start as well. They have three prospects in our top 13. No other organization has that many uh prospects among our first Baker's dozen. So the ceiling is certainly there for Arizona. They also have a pitching prospect in Brandon Fott. And one other guy to keep an eye on is Davison De Los Santos, who is already showing major league ready exit velocities at just 19 years old. Okay. Now Drew Jones is 18. If my memory is correct, and I don't think it usually is, didn't Andrew Jones play in the world series at either 18 or 19 with Atlanta? Yeah, uh, he, uh, Andre Jones was on one of the fastest trajectories we've ever seen uh, for prospects. I, I don't think Drew Jones is necessarily going to be on that same rise, especially following the news that he had shoulder surgery. He injured his shoulder during you know uh, about a batting practice. Um, so his pro debut is on delay right now. That's going to put him a little bit further back. But given what the tools are, he could easily climb uh, to the majors before his 21st, 22nd birthday. Wow. All right, so uh, Saturday night on MLB Network, we have minor league game. We have the uh, Syracuse Mets and Charlotte Knights in North Carolina. So give us a sense of uh, people we should look for in that game when we watch it on MLB Network. Yeah, well, I mentioned Alvarez before. We might as well circle it back to him. He is at AAA Syracuse. One thing to watch out for in that game in Charlotte, Charlotte is a launching pad. It's one of the most hitter-friendly ballparks in all of AAA, but specifically in the International League, uh, where hitter-friendly ballparks are not the norm by any means. So Alvarez could definitely take advantage of that, put his plus-plus power into play. The other guy to mention there is Mark Vientos, their number seven prospect in the Mets system. Vientos... Uh, also has really strong power. He has 24 homers at AAA before his 23rd birthday. Um, so his power could play. He has a little bit of an issue right now getting the ball off the ground, but when he does, it tends to go a long way. And then on the Charlotte side, number 30 prospect, Carlos Perez, known a little bit more as a defensive catcher. Uh, he's got a 55 glove, but he, this year he has a career high 17 homers. So he could certainly let it fly on Saturday as well uh, when people are watching that game. Also, if you are watching, uh, one thing to note, the game will be on StatCast, so make sure to also be following that on Baseball's Vaunt, and you can find out that Francisco Alvarez hits a 420-foot homer, or Mark Vientos has an exit velocity at 110 miles an hour. It's just another way to follow a fun and exciting AAA game. Yeah, hey, if, I don't know if you can see the monitor here, but we have the uh, experimental playing rules for this game. I want you, if you can, talk a little bit about the pitch timer, the larger bases, and the automated ball strike abs challenge system. Pick one of those and kind of give us a sense of what it is. Yeah, I'll start with a pitch timer because I think that's something that uh, is a little bit more universal in minor league baseball. But if you haven't been out to a minor league game this year, you might not know just the effect that the pitch timer is having, the pitch clock, as we call it. 14 seconds with bases empty, as it says there on your screen. 19 seconds with runners on. That seems like a decent amount of time, but it has actually really picked up the pace of play throughout minor league baseball at every level that the pitch timer has been used. And you can notice it. If you're in the ballpark, you can feel the game humming along. There's not really these breaks where guys are holding on to the ball, guys are constantly stepping out. Th this is teaching guys, you know, the routines of trying to get to the ball, to the plate as quickly as possible, uh, not too fast. It's not like zipping through, but when you're looking up and all of a sudden it's the eighth inning and the, it's two hours have passed, uh, you really notice the difference. And, you know, if you haven't watched a minor league game this year, Saturday is a great opportunity to see that and see that pitch clock in action. Sam Dykstra, thank you so much. We appreciate the insight and the passion as well and the information. Good to see you, my friend, and uh, enjoy 